What's up, it's P. Rich from the Hatchet Boys. Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing and discussing Hell House LLC. Yeah, uh, before I start doing the review for um, Hell House LLC, uh, if you haven't <coughs> watched uh, my uh, trailer reaction for uh, Mickey's Mouse, uh, Mouse Trap, uh, I suggest you watch <laughs> Yeah, fucking Mickey Mouse, that's killer, oh man. Yeah, so just watch that video, you'll get my reaction from that. Alright, who's the asshole? Which one of you decided to go and start badmouthing the Chinese government? Hell House LLC is a 2015 American Final Footage horror film. And it's written and directed by Stephen Congenti and produced by Joe Bandelli. The film shot as a documentary follows a group of Halloween haunted house uh, creators as they prepare for the 2009 opening of their popular haunted attraction. Hell House tragedy strikes on opening night when an unknown uh, malfunction causes the death of 15 uh, tour goers and staff. The film reveals the lead up to the tragedy as what really went wrong that night, the details of which have uh, remained a mystery to the public. Uh, the film was released on a number of video on demand platforms, including Amazon Video shutter youtube uh and itunes on november 1st 2016. yeah i mean i th i think this uh found footage film was really well done uh, a lot better than a lot of the other ones i've seen um yeah i i think it's really up there for me uh yeah, I mean, there was Quarantine, I like that one. That was a decent uh, found footage film. Um, uh, Blair Witch Project, obviously. Uh, and Cloverfield. I mean, yeah, they're good. This one's right up there, I, I think. Um, I find it's got, like, scarier moments that the Blair Witch does for sure and it's uh film better too I find um yeah it's just this film has a lot more suspense and little eerie moments more than the Blair Witch does or Cloverfield so yeah definitely this uh movie Hell House LLC is up there it, it really is I really enjoyed it uh so told in a documentary format, the story follows a group of documentary filmmakers as they try to trace their way back to seemingly inexplainable tragedy that took place in a spook house in 2009 on the eve of Halloween. The edit of the film is <clears throat> befitting but leaves several questions behind. Um, if you are wondering what's in the basement, we know that uh, you want to know. Uh, we'll try to break down the edit for you. So, uh, yeah, there's going to be spoilers ahead. So, Hell House uh, LLC opens with uh, Diane Graves, a documentary filmmaker, 
and her crew turn it up in front of a seemingly abandoned house, which is the site of a uh, a tragedy that took place five years earlier. The scene cuts to uh, news clippings that depict the horrified incident that establishes the premise of the film. Uh, So yeah, it's uh, based in like, in a banded <clears throat> hotel uh, in Rockland County, New York, or Rockland County, New York. The now abandoned spook house is uh, central to the mystery following the baffling death of 15 uh, people that opened a night on October 8th, 2009. Uh, so a video that the film claims is uploaded on YouTube shows a tour goer uh, perspective of what went wrong at Hell House on the night of its opening. Seemingly shot on a cell phone, the video begins with a cue of the audience waiting to experience the the event at the haunted house. So during the tour. We see a bunch of props, fake spider webs, and uh, grotesque uh, like mannequins and things uh, one would normally expect from like a like a haunted house tour, like a spook house. Uh, we also see a cloud brought in against the traffic, which is perhaps odd, but uh, we can be dismissed as a technical glitch. Yeah, the fucking cloud they did in this movie, it's great. And it's spooky. Yeah, it's eerie. It's great how they uh, really uh, utilize that cloud. It's great. And uh, I'll get to some of those scenes uh, with the cloud. But yeah, it's it's spooky, man. I like it. So the tour uh, takes the audience through the dark and digi uh, corridors to the basement. And that basement is fucking spooky, man. It is. It, it really is. Uh, it kind of gave me like a, a eerie feeling, like an uptight feeling, uh, almost. It did. Uh, I'll just mention something real quick. In my childhood, uh, uh, when my mom first moved us here to Prince Edward Island, uh, we uh, moved in with my grandparents and my grandfather, uh, he was a caretaker of uh, the church that uh, he lived right next door to. And uh, and uh, if I was misbehaving uh, by daddy, she was a, a, a wonderful woman, but she was an alcoholic also. And, uh, and if I was misbehaving, she would take me down in the basement, not the church, but of their house. It's a very old very old house, like Victorian home. And uh, and there was a cellar. And it reminded me a lot of this uh, basement in this film. And it was just like that. And it fucking brought back a lot of memories because she, she would uh, uh, lock me in there because I was like uh, misbehaving, being bad or whatever, right? And... Uh, yeah, she locked me in there for probably like a good half hour before and with no lights on, like a little light. And it was scary, the smell and fuck it, I don't know. But yeah, watching this film just brought all those memories back. It was, it was cool. And uh, yeah, I was scared as a kid. And uh, at that moment of the movie, it, it triggered it for sure. So it kind of gave me like a... Uh, unsettling feeling is which is great. I love that. So, uh, but yeah, back to the movie. So we see people uh, frantically running up the stairs, and the camera runs along with them. We cannot uh, like really make out what's going on and what's wrong in the basement, but we hear like a shriek that does not seem to be. Uh, pre-recorded and the rest of the film tries to take the audience back to this moment of uh, rapture from different perspectives 
and uh, construct the timeline of Doom from which it happened. It, it's it's really good. I like the concept of this film. I like the storyline and. And as the movie goes along, I, I like how they build it up, build it up, build it up, man. There's a few, like, good, creepy, freaky scenes, like I was saying. Uh, we see photos of a bloodstained floor uh, clicked by a photographer uh, named Martin Cliver, who broke into the scene shortly after the tragedy, where we hear the first-hand account of Hell House from Sarah, uh, Havel, a member as the documentary filmmakers interview her. Sarah provides more footage from which the filmmakers can reconstruct the timeline. The viewers get to know from the footage that Sarah is the girlfriend of Alex, and Alex is the one who put this whole thing together. Uh, so that Sarah is, yeah is the girlfriend of Alex, who is the main organizer of the owner of the Hell House. Besides Sarah and Alex, the crew uh, consists of three others, Tony, the technical manager, and Paul, the camera person, and Mac, Alex's business partner. They're on their way from New York to uh, a bandit where they have bought an old hotel um, intended to renovate it as a scare house, which becomes the Hell House. As they explore the property, they find a rope painted from the attic. Yeah, it's, it's kind of creepy. Uh, yeah, it's nothing like too creepy or anything, but like, I don't, I don't know, just the way they like set it up, it, it's kind of creepy. And uh, a pentagram drawn on the basement wall, which set the tone for all that would unfold in the following series of events. They set up a few, uh, like, grotesque plastic figures in place, and in good humor, test whether the heads of the mechanics move or not. And the next thing we know, uh, the cloud starts moving around the house. They find the cloud like upstairs and just random spots like throughout the house. It's fucking freaky, man. Like nothing like scary, but I mean like that jumps out and scares you. But it's just kind of creepy. I like that. And uh, so a series of well executed jump scares and supernatural um, like events follow the film and it moves towards like a more of like a a nightmare of what these people are going through in this hell house. It's great. And uh, this is the question that keeps us hooked in the storyline till the very end. In the YouTube footage we see a horde of uh, like tour goers fleeing from the basement but are unable to make anything of it due to the ruckus and the uh like jerk camera move it's typical of found footage narrative later from the clips provided by sarah we see the pedigree and the bibles of the basement which sarah rightfully uh finds suspicious of uh, and later still we see like a plastic cloud placed in the basement, moving through the stairs in the darkness, and a hooded uh, skeleton begins appearing in the corridor as well, as a horrified Paul. Yeah, so Paul um, captures the events of the film, and we get to find that previous owner of the property uh, at the hotel earlier named Andrew Tully hated himself following the mysterious disappearance of a mother and her 11 year old daughter from Hell House which was a hotel then. Uh, so while Melissa an actress is hired for the show discloses this information to the crew she is unable to tell whether or not 
uh, Tully perform satanic rituals in the basement, which I think he did. Uh, and at one point in the film, the audience finds a seemingly hypnotized Sarah Chanton uh, Latin, like, yeah, she starts like chanting Latin, speaking in Latin in the basement, which seems like satanic. Yeah, man. <coughs> <coughs> So yeah, I think um, um, Sarah gets possessed. I do. I think she gets possessed. And um, <clears throat> uh, which seems satanic from the sound of it. <clears throat> Another episode finds a drum struck or uh, <clears throat> excuse me Another episode finds a dumbstruck Paul sitting on the basement floor, followed Paul's encounter with the girl's ghost. Yeah, that seems, it's like nothing too scary, but it's kind of like eerie and creepy in a way. So when the film revisits the moment of the rapture in the basement, we see Joey, the clown, rushing by, and Melissa is like, kind of like chained up uh, that's how they wanted um, it to be acted out as as these uh, tour goers are going through the house uh, yeah Melissa's chained up and uh, and another actor uh, Joey is dressed up as the clown but he goes further by and screaming for help and then we see a few shadowy um Apparitions walk towards the cavern, which are not part of the show. The hooded leader of the ungodly uh, apparitions uh, slits Melissa's throat, and uh, she is left screaming and bleeding as the crowd uh, tries to get out of the house. The basement trope is a staple in horror films, but Hell House LLC takes like a familiar trope to a new height through its effective use of blurry found footage cinematography. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's 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 not the worst I've ever seen. It's it's not too bad. It's kind of hard to make out a little bit, but I'll get into that with the technical elements. The final moments of the film provide a nightmare's conclusion to the. This uh, horrific tale, Sarah Havel gives an interview and provides the rest of the footage uh, that she had to the documentary filmmaker. Sarah abruptly ends the interview by saying that she's feeling sick and it is going to take a few hours to rest in her room. Uh, and she stayed in room 2C. Uh, she also suggests that the interviewing crew should go to the location themselves to get a, a better picture of the house. However, the next uh, set of events unfold uh, like rapidly and in a way that the viewer would not have like expected, like anticipated like at all. So Diane, uh, the documentary girl who's making this documentary of Hell House and what happened, uh, asked the hotel receptionist to inform Sarah that they are going out, only to find that Sarah um, Havel is not staying at that hotel and that the hotel rooms don't have letters assigned to them. Uh, we are told through little cards that uh, Mitchell from the filmmaker crew catalogs a footage uh, delivered by Sarah after the departure, Diane, what she finds is like, yeah, it's pretty messed up. Eclipses a dazed Paul stabbed Sarah and slitted his own throat shortly after. Um, as Diane and her uh, camera person break into the site of, uh, like, hotel. Hell, hell, 
hotel, whatever, the site of, of what happened there. Uh, they got a call from Mitchell, which they blatantly ignore. They happened to discover room number 2C in the Hell House, where they encounter uh, Sarah sitting up in the attic in one of the bedrooms in 2C. And, uh, and then we see like uh, two shadowy figures coming towards them, after which the camera uh, falls to the ground. And the suggestion is that Sarah's ghost has lured the documentary crew into the dungeon and the fate of doom has befallen a curious diet. So abandoned is the name of the town where the Hell House is uh, situated, while no town of that name exists in the country. Uh, the name holds a specific significance in the context of the film. We get to know from the interviewee that abandoned is the name of the demon who guards in the gates of hell. So yeah, the English meaning of Hebrew name is destruction in Hebrew Bible. Abandoned is used to refer to a bottomless pit, also known as the realm of the dead. So the diabolical name of the fictional township sets the tone of the film and lets viewers anticipate the series of the horrific events to unfold in the course of the film. Yeah, damn, I mean, get back to like some of these other scenes that I haven't mentioned. Um, this is a Paul, the camera guy. He starts like acting weird and sick. He's always in bed. Um, but before uh, that happens, lead it up. Yeah, like I said, I mentioned before earlier, you see shadow figures and you see this cloud just set up in the most random his places. And they just like they play jokes on each other, like tricks on each other, which isn't the uh, fact at all. So, and then uh, this Paul guy is in his bedroom, he's not feeling well. And I think he's going to sleep or whatever. And he see this girl and she looks dead, but she's freaky looking. And he throws the uh, covers over his head and she gets closer and closer as he's like peeking. And he takes the covers off and then she's like right in his face. And that was a good jump scare. It got me a little bit. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I thought it was kind of freaky because the girl looked like the makeup effects look great. I liked it. Uh, yeah, a lot. I really liked that scene. Um, yeah, the Paul is just like acted all weird ever since that encounter. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think if there's another scene uh, that I haven't mentioned. Well, the end is, yeah, that's, it's kind of freaky. Uh, yeah, and uh, I even like this movie better than Paranormal Activity. Like, the first two Paranormal Activity films I thought were pretty good. Like, they were pretty decent, but I think this is way better. Um, Anyways, yeah, I'm just trying to remember if there's any other scenes that I liked. Yeah, just with the cloud head uh, turned it, and when these um, bad kids' heads can't turn. Like, yeah, that was, like, it was good. Uh, it's a little freaky. Yeah, I like that. Um, at the end, it, yeah, I, I really enjoyed when, uh, you see, Alex, like, slit his own throat and that Sarah girl like it's, it's kind of hard to make out and to see what happens to her but she gets pulled away but um she's bleeding all over the place before she gets drugged away so yeah she ends up getting drugged away so I'm thinking it's like was she, is she just possessed by these spirits these demonic spirits and while she's doing the interview and all that shit. Because I don't think they're pulling like a whole sixth sense 
fucking thing. If she was a ghost, like, you think they could really see her? Like, her being in the interview room and being on camera and all that shit? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's like, was she a ghost or was she just possessed? I, I, I like that. I like that. So, I mean... Yeah, I mean, she could be a ghost, I don't know. But I like that. Uh, so I guess it's kind of up to the viewer to decide, I guess. Uh, I'd like to know all your guys' thoughts, what you thought of the edit of this film, uh, and what you think happened. Like, is she possessed or is she a ghost? Like, I'm curious to know your guys' thoughts. Uh, yeah, uh... So I really enjoyed watching this movie. I liked it. Uh, there's three more, I do believe. I heard uh, two or three aren't that great, but I'll give them a go and see. Uh, yeah, I mean, the characters of this film, uh, it seemed real realistic. Like, yeah, like Blair Witch, like uh, the act is, was more believable in this film, I find, than Blair Witch. Like, don't get me wrong, like, I really enjoy Blair Witch and that, but I find the tone of this movie is way better, the setup's way better, the payoff is way better, um, it's better paced, it's, it's not as boring, and the acting is better. Um, yeah, so I liked all the characters in this film, and it does seem really realistic, like you're actually watching, like, fan footage of, like, actual real people. Like, I thought it was very well done. I, I do, yeah. Um, yeah, so the technical elements, I mean... Um, yeah, just like a found footage, footage, like, uh, it's okay, it's, it's not the worst I've ever seen, um, the lighted in a lot of the parts are pretty good, um, uh, that one scene where <coughs> they're testing out the lights, um, uh, and he, uh, tells them to use the strobe light, and it's flickering, that was kind of hard to make out, but you can kind of make out of what you see it. And that scene is a little, uh, good. Yeah, that scene's good too. Like you see like that other figure coming closer and closer. Yeah, that was good. I like that. Oh, but the strobe light was kind of a little too hard to see. But other than that, uh, the setting of this movie is great. That house and that basement, like, even in the attic, it's, it, it's freaky. Like I was mentioning before when I was younger and all that. Like, yeah, I think that whole setting is great. It's awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, the sound? Yeah, the sound was good. Uh Yeah, the practical and special effects, like makeup effects, were decent too for like a Found Forge film. I liked them. I thought they were good. Yeah. Um, do I recommend this movie? Yeah, I do. I do. I do recommend watch this movie. I thought it was good, like I said before. Yeah, I thought it was very well done. Um, where do I rate it as? I would have to give it a seven and a half. Maybe even an eight. Yeah, I'll I'll give yeah, I'll give this movie an eight out of ten for sure. Uh yeah. So I'm not quite too sure about the overall success of this film. Uh Yeah, I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, yeah, so that's my review for Hell House LLC. And uh, yeah, I'll give the other ones a go. Uh, see what they're like.
Uh, I'll probably end up doing a review on those too, maybe. I would like to finish the Halloween franchise, but yeah. So yeah, my next uh, video will be uh, Halloween Resurrection. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.